Hey guys, in this video I'll show you how to unlock all the Skyview Towers at the beginning of the game, including the ones that are blocked off. I've come up with a path to follow that makes it a lot easier than just mindlessly beelining across grand canyons and mountaintops to unlock them as well, and you won't need anything special besides the paraglider. If you're going to do shrines, I suggest you build up your stamina as much as possible, since stamina helps with a lot of traversal abilities, and hearts only really matter for taking damage. But I'm doing this entire thing with a basic stamina wheel in one go and unlocking every Skyview Tower at the beginning of the game. The entire process took me a couple hours, and that's with mistakes, grabbing some fairies, and picking up random crap on the way. A few quick notes before starting. Make sure to collect the Zonai charges from the rusted statues during the run if you don't have lots. I'll show you where to spend them on the way to meet the basic requirements of the run. It's wise to save often and catch fairies on the way too. You'll also need a few bombs or weapons that can break boulders. Unlocking two of the towers requires that. You should have four bombs from the Great Sky Island if you didn't use them. You'll also need around 10 to 15 hot peppers to give you around 20 to 30 minutes of cold proof for certain sections. Finally, even though it would be helpful to map out Sky Islands while doing this, since there'll be an advantageous proximity while running around, I'm only focusing on Skyview Towers in this video. I'll do a Sky Island mapping video eventually, but the scope of that is so much bigger than this video, it would take me a long time to find an ideal route between Skyview Towers while also taking Sky Islands into account. Those will be their own video, along with the loot that I found from exploring them. By the time you get the glider at Lookout Landing, you'll also have that one Skyview Tower unlocked. The next four towers in this run can be directly accessed from the Great Sky Island, and you can do them in whatever order. I started with the Sahasra Skyview Tower by fast traveling to the eastern shrine on the island and dropping down. The way to unlock this tower is to go into the caves underneath it and clear some rocks while running directly underneath the tower and ascending. I used three arrow bombs to do it. Grab the long sticks and hold on to them since they can be helpful on the run if you don't have tons of arrows to spare. I'll explain in the run. The next tower is the Poplar Foothills Skyview Tower. You access it by fast traveling to the same eastern shrine on the island, jumping off and gliding south to land on it. To open this one, you need to enter an excavation site on the other side of the hill from the well to free the mechanic. Use the Poplar Foothills Skyview Tower to glide to the small island with the launch ramp and pool. Take out the construct without triggering the rockets. You'll encounter several constructs on floating platforms guarding rockets on this run, and it's best to either use a bow or a long stick to take out the constructs without triggering the rockets. Since I did this run at the start of the game, I didn't have many arrows, and I saved arrows by poking the enemies. Add one of the rockets to a shield, and add the second rocket to a nearby two-fan glider. Launch the glider and head east towards the Rabella Wetland Skyview Tower. It'll take you most of the way there. At this sky tower, you'll need to burn a path in the brambles under cover to get close to the tower, or make a bridge over the brambles with the nearby wood planks. To access the door of the tower, build a makeshift cover over the brambles so you can light them up and enter. The cover mechanics can be janky, so keep trying and modifying if it doesn't work the first time. Fast travel to the final giant sky island shrine, Nechoya. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm going to butcher these names, sorry. And take the glider curving west slightly. When the glider disappears, navigate to the Hyrule Field Skyview Tower and drop directly on it. This lets you avoid the Bokoblin encampment guarding it. Use the Hyrule Field Skyview Tower and glide to the nearby Fairy Island with the launch pad. Go to the floating platform and attach one of the nearby rockets facing away from the island. If you have a free shield, attach the second rocket to it. Take the platform to the next island and take out the construct guarding the next platform with rockets on it. Attach a rocket facing the construct arena and make sure the loose rocket won't fall off. Hit the attached rocket and when it's spent, attach the loose rocket and hit that. Go past the flux construct and run to the floating platform with the balloons. You can make this next hop with what the platform already has, but it wouldn't hurt to add a few extra batteries to be safe. Take the platform up and when it's safe, glide to the island you just rose to. Trigger the shrine for the waypoint and spend 5 zonai charges at the dispenser. Always use five. Anything less is a waste. You can check to make sure that one of each rolled out, but don't worry too much about ensuring each dispenser gives you everything. You'll need 10 to 15 spare charges for a specific dispenser on the run. Don't forget that each of the rusted little statues gives you a Zonai charge, so check every one in your path. Point the launcher at the nearby two-pool island and glide the rest of the way. Build a two-fan glider after landing and launch it. Once you're airborne, make a hard left and glide to the Gerudo Canyon Tower. 
To open this one, stick a few blocks together and bring them over to the wooden elevator and attach them to the weight to raise the guy stranded below and he'll fix it. Use the Gerudo Canyon Skyview Tower and land on the nearby ferry island. Grab one of the loose rockets and attach it to a glider. Then move the glider to the corner of the island facing the next tower. Grab the other loose rocket and drop it loosely in front of one of the fans. This is kind of janky, so don't hesitate to save before launching. By now you need to have at least one cold proof meal ready, so take out a pot and cook five spicy peppers if you haven't already. The pants you got after the third Big Sky Island Shrine aren't enough, but you should have them equipped too. Launch the glider without hitting the loose rocket, and quickly grab the loose rocket with Ultra Hand and attach it, then strike it. Go until your glider breaks, then use your paraglider to drop to the ground and eat the food. Run to the tower, you'll need to climb twice or burn a shield rocket to get up. Once you get to the tower, make your way to the nearby cave. Attach two long boards together and drop them in the river, then jump on. When you make it to the end, ascend into the Gerudo Highlands Tower and trigger it. If your board doesn't properly line up with the square in the ceiling, unattach the second board and place it properly underneath the square and ascend from it. Use the Gerudo Highlands Tower to get to the nearby fairy island. This next section is an archipelago of small floating islands in low gravity and it's littered with floating platforms that each have a construct and two rockets. You need to make your way around the floating sphere to the three-part island on the other side, so just take a few platforms. For each platform you use, dive onto the construct and take it out quickly without hitting the rockets. Remove the bow that it drops, pick up the consumables, and place one rocket diagonally in the direction you want to go. Before triggering it, nest the second rocket to make sure that it doesn't fly away if you're worried about it, but that mostly happens when you're using a rocket horizontally, though I usually nest rockets before flying regardless. Make sure to hit the attached rocket with a spear or other weapon that minimizes the chances of you hitting the loose rocket. Since this area is low gravity, and since there's so many rocket platforms, you can afford to make some mistakes and just close gaps with the paraglider, but it doesn't hurt to save often in case you need to reload a segment. Once you get to the floating island, trigger the shrine glyph and use the zonai dispenser, then drop down to the small island connected to the construct arena. Add all the loose batteries to the prepared device and fly past the construct in the direction of Hyrule Castle. Ditch the vehicle when you run out of juice and glide to the circular flying structure. You can land on it to refill your energy. Move to the closest point on the structure, to the Lindor Brow Sky Tower down below, and drop onto it. Fast travel back to the last shrine island you came from, and use the launcher to get to the higher island with the ruins poking out the top. I paused here to drain the water using the glyph on the opposite side, and collected some fish in case I found myself needing some quick health for the next few towers. Run to the north side of the island and glide down to the middle of the three islands below you. Attach a couple fans and a rocket to the glider and move it over to the north side of the island, then launch towards the next tower. I used a second rocket here, but it wasn't necessary. When you're above Rossboro Pass Skyview Tower, drop to it, avoiding the brambles blocking the platform. Use this tower and glide to one of the floating platforms near the floating island to the north. Hit the balloon and get to the island. Trigger the shrine glyph and use the dispenser. This is where you'll need Zonai charges because you need to build up at least six rocket capsules. Use the launcher to get to the highest island in this section and build a glider with a fan and rocket. Attach a fan and rocket, then launch facing east. Once the glider disappears, glide to the nearest slope somewhat above the visible boundary that looks like you can slide down it. I had to rocket jump to get a proper slope because I aimed the glider a bit wrong and landed at the visibility boundary. You need to be a bit higher up for the next section. Shield slide towards the Skyview Tower. If you don't know how to do it, that's ZL to raise the shield, then X to jump and A to start sliding. When you can't slide anymore, run towards the tower and ascend around here and keep running. When you get to the broken bridge, build a house with three pieces of the bridge and place it under the low-hanging dark stone and use it to ascend. This unlocks Picada Stone Grove Skyview Tower. Fast travel to the Lookout Landing Skyview Tower and use it, then glide to the right of Hyrule Castle. You're aiming just south of Boneyard Bridge. There's a pack of horses hanging around the shrine. They're pretty easy to tame. You just need one to cover a bit of ground to the final patch of Skyview Towers. Grab a horse and ride it towards the closest Skyview Tower, taking either nearby bridge and following the path towards the smoke coming from the nearby stable. When you hit the stable, follow the northeastern path until you get to this overlooking rock you can ascend into. Run towards the tower and burn a shield rocket for the final climb, to Eldin Canyon Skyview Tower. 
You'll need to burn a rocket or rewind a rock to enter it from the top, so if you only have one rocket, save it for the entry. You can also look around for fallen rocks though. They glow when you use the rewind ability. There's a nearby stone slab that usually has fallen rocks on it that you can ride. Use this tower and land on the nearby island. Deal with the enemies, then attach a fan to a cart and take it up the rails. When you get to the next island, ascend twice to get to the top and use another fan cart to get to the next island. Trigger the shrine and use the dispenser. Use the launcher to get to the higher island with some ruins on it. Pull out a glider, fan, and rocket and build it. Point the glider northeast and fly. When your glider breaks, paraglide the rest of the way to the Ulri Mountain Skyview Tower. You'll need to retrieve the console from the flying enemy, a single arrow should be enough. Fast travel back to the last shrine island, run to the north side, build another glider with a fan and rocket, and launch. You're aiming for the small floating island to the north. Drop to the small island, attach the rocket to the glider there, and place it facing northwest. Launch the glider, and when it disappears, glide the rest of the way to the Typhlo Ruin Skyview Tower. You'll need to move a floating platform that's blocking the top of the tower, and you can get some rockets for your shields off the platforms that the constructs are guarding. Fast travel back to the same island again and launch with a fan and rocket glider off the highest island facing southeast this time, and fly until you're on top of the Upland Zorana Skyview Tower, then drop to it. You'll need to clear some gunk blocking the entrance, you can just use one of the hydrants that you got from the previous dispensers. Use this tower and glide to the nearby island with ruins and a launch pad. Build a glider with a fan and a rocket and place it on a green rock facing south towards the floating construct arena. Save because this next flight's pretty tight. You may need a rocket boost to land it. Fly to the arena and land on one of the southeastern edges. Build the same glider again with fan and rocket. Face it southeast and glide to the Mount Lanayru Skyview Tower. Congratulations, you unlocked all the Skyview Towers. Thanks for watching. Subscribe because there's more coming. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.